The 2016 World Series. For anyone outside of Cleveland, this was an absolute miracle. The Chicago Cubs had failed to win the World Series for over 100 years, and thanks to great pitching, they were able to make it happen. Now, two of the pitchers on that team, Hector Rondon and Pedro Strop, had a secret weapon, and it wasn't their fastball. And actually, it wasn't really a secret because earlier that year, the Wall Street Journal had written about them saying, you know what? These guys and their team, they're the best smelling team we've ever covered. So if you haven't guessed it, that secret weapon, performance enhancing colognes. So first up, I wanna point out, this goes well beyond baseball. Michael Jordan, he's got his own fragrance line. David Beckham, Cristiano Ronaldo, all of these guys understand the power of scent because it goes way back. Let's look at the ancient Greeks, the first Olympics. Guess what? They were using smelling salts and fragrance perfuming themselves to get into a state of mind. Performance enhancing clones are all about state of mind. It's all about getting you into the zone to perform at a higher level. So let's look at Salvador Perez. Back in 2012, Kansas City Royals, he had one of his teammates spray a special substance on him. He wasn't having that great of, you know, last couple games. He goes out and he gets four hits on the day. And guess what? It was Victoria's Secret that one of his uh, yeah teammates sprayed on him. He's like, you know, I don't care. That stuff works. And it just gave him confidence. And he contributed and actually never looked back, picked up a number of fragrances, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. And uh, Kansas City went on to win the 2015 World Series. And some guys take it to an extreme. Francisco Lindor of the Mets, this guy apparently has like a dozen fragrances that he takes with him. He's got pretty much, he chews through them. Sometimes he'll layer up, wear multiple fragrances at the same time, depending on how he's feeling. In fact, I was reading some guy over on Reddit saying, hey, I was there for a promotional deal. We're getting a pregame walk around and we go by the visitor dugout and Lindor walks by and I'm like, oh my gosh, definitely. I mean, he smelled great, but you could smell this guy, you know, like 10 feet away. And Lindor pretty much confirmed this when he talked about, hey, I like to talk about fragrances even, you know, when, during the game. Sometimes we talk about how he smells, whether cologne he's got on. Uh so apparently they're on first base. These guys will be shooting the shit, talking about stuff. And uh, somehow fragrances come up and these guys are, yeah, just sharing information about what they're wearing. And what I find most interesting is how these things get started. So Strop's talking about how, how did he start wearing fragrances? A lot of people think, oh, he's Latin. He just wore this. Apparently not. Uh, he was actually in the minor leagues and there was this other minor league player named Esteban Germont. And uh, apparently Strop looked up to him and he's noticing that the guy is putting on fragrance before going out there and playing baseball. And he's like, why are you going to do that, man? You're just going to smell. I mean, we're going to be sweating. And German stops him and says, yeah, I'm going to smell, but I want to smell good. And personally, I love that mentality because most guys, when it comes to smell, they play defense. You wear deodorant. You don't want to smell bad. But if you could smell good and you can set an impression, if you can be remembered, guy, I mean, that's that's pretty cool, right? And Manny Machado with the Padres was talking about this. You got to smell good to play good. But specifically, he said, when I hit a home run, I want them to smell me running around those bases. I want them to remember me. Oh, and my wife loves the way I smell too. And perhaps David Ortiz summed it up when asked about smell and his fragrance during the 2013 World Series win by the Boston Red Sox. He said, you know what? It's the good luck smell. Now, I know there's a lot of skeptics out there to San Antonio. Again, this is a bunch of snake oil, a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of malarkey, and I can definitely see where you're coming from. That's why I, down in the description of today's video, I'm linking over to tons of studies that actually break this stuff out. And if you believe, I'm not talking aromatherapy here where you smell something and it's going to cure cancer. That That's a bunch of BS. That's dangerous. What I'm talking about here, though, is scent conditioning. And this happens all the time, oftentimes, though, by accident. Think about with coffee. Whenever people smell coffee, before it enters their bloodstream, you know, the, the caffeine, their blood vessels are already constricting when they smell it. The effect, they've conditioned themselves to behave in a certain way based off of the scent. Now, specifically, how does fragrance, how does smell have such a primal, such a direct effect on the brain that the other senses actually can't touch? So it goes down to the structure and the way things are set up with the body. So as you know, that you know, with the thalamus, that's basically the relay center of the brain. Pretty much everything goes through there. When you touch something, when you see something, it's got to go through the relay center before it goes to the brain. This isn't the case for smell. So the olfactory system goes, basically, it goes directly to the front part of the brain. And that's where our amygdala is at. And the amygdala is what controls emotion. Basically, smell has a direct link 
to emotions and the way that we feel. And if you know anything about behavior, anything with the way people, you know, we make decisions, emotions are the key factor. We like to think we're logical. No, we're not. We are ba- So when it comes to confidence, it makes sense that these baseball players, when they smell something new and they have a great game, they associate that smell with high performance. And guess what? You do this enough times, all of a sudden you condition yourself to get into the zone, to feel confident whenever you have that smell come up. So think about that. Anyone that's played sports understands the importance of confidence and being able to go out there and just do what you already have trained to do. Now, gents, wouldn't it be great if there were a set of fragrances out there specifically formulated to help you perform at a higher level, to help you be more honorable, more courageous, more committed to accomplishing your goals? Well, gents, you don't have to worry about it because guess what? I have done it over at Mission Fragrances. Wasn't that a smooth like transition right in? Guys, this set I am so proud of because it's a passion project. Over the years, I have found tons and tons of data information that talked about the power of scent. Personally, I have bought almost 500 fragrances and it just blown me away how they make me feel. But I realize the average person doesn't need to spend that much money, you know, just crazy about fragrances like I am, but you still want the performance enhancing benefits that come with understanding the power of smell. And that's exactly what we've put together at Mission Fragrances. Guys, I'm linking down in the description of today's video. If you just want to learn more, go over to the Mission Fragrance website and you'll get a lot more information. But what's cool about these is they have an entire course that goes with them that teaches you how how to use them. I mean, think about it. If you go out there and buy a jet, congratulations, you got a lot of money, but you get a jet, you can't do anything with it unless you know how to fly it. And that's why I've designed a course that teaches you exactly how to use these performance enhancing colognes. We go into the specific notes that are in each in honor, encourage, and commitment. Notice these are the core values of my United States Marine Corps. But guys, I did this because I wanted you guys to have a weapon. I wanted you to have a tool that can give you an edge over your competition, something that can help you get into the zone quickly. And I'm really proud about what we're doing here because I I think it really is a game changer. I haven't seen anyone really talk about this. I'm like, you know what? This product needs to exist. If you want to learn more, click on the link in the description. Go check out Mission Fragrances. All right, Jen. So now let's talk about the players and their favorite fragrances. So first up, we've got Salvador Perez. And yes, I know Victoria's Secret is what got him started. And he's actually rotated through quite a few fragrances. But Paco Rabanne's Invictus apparently is his go-to. Now, personally, I was not surprised that Paco Rabanne Invictus popped up on this list. I mean, just the shape of the bottle. They did a really great job uh, just instilling, hey, this is the fragrance of a champion. It's clean. It's clear. It actually has some great projection. But there's a lot of options out there because there's the original, which actually you can find at discounters and get a great deal on. But you're going to see Aqua that's harder to find. You're going to see Intense. I think that actually all of them are decent fragrances. I do feel they're a bit synthetic, but Paco Rabanne bonds in general are all going to be kind of like that, but they've got good projection and good longevity. Next up, we've got Yuli Guriel. And what is he wearing? So apparently Antonio Banderas fragrances were his go-to. Now this started off whenever, you know, he got started, he was in the minors, didn't have a whole lot of money. He was also outside the United States and he just had limited options on the island. This makes a lot of sense. That being said, don't sleep on Antonio Banderas fragrances. I have quite a few of them, about 10 of them, and I think they're good. Solid fragrances. Now, The secret and the golden secret that I've got here, this is going to be definitely, it's uh, very similar to 1 million by Paco Rabanne, sweet, uh, strong, but it's a lot cheaper. You've also got, as you saw right over here, you know, he's got some fresher, cleaner ones. So King of Seduction, you've also got Blue Seduction. There are tons of options. I find they're incredibly cheap. And if you are on a budget, I think it's a great house to grab just a number of fragrances and to have fun with them. Next up, we've got Eugenio Suarez. And I have to say that this is a solid pick. And that is Prada's Luna Rosa Sport. Now, it makes sense, a sport fragrance. When you see sport fragrances in general, these are going to be lighter. These are going to be cleaner. These are ones in the sense you could wear to the gym. And this is a beautiful gym fragrance. That being said, you can put a little bit more on. And if you want something, you know, stick with the Luna Rosa line is amazing. I absolutely I love carbon. I love black. Uh, even Ocean, in their newest release, is actually kind of wearing on me a bit. I'm certainly, I'm liking it. So, guys, go out there 
if you want some, yeah, Luna Rosa just makes, it's a great line. Prada in general, solid ingredients. Next up, we've got Nelson Cruz and you're killing me here. He just said Tom Ford. Tom Ford has so many amazing fragrances. It's hard to go wrong, but Tom Ford fragrances are going to be more expensive. It makes sense. You're a baseball player with millions of dollars and yeah, why not just get the entire Tom Ford line? But for those of you guys looking for some amazing options, I will let you know these are the ones I absolutely love. So Noir Extreme. This one, solid, just a great option if you're starting off. Uh, I like it better than the original Noir. Let's also talk about Tobacco Vanille and Oud wood. Now, tobacco vanilla is going to project. If you want someone to smell you 50 to 75 feet away, yeah, that's the one that you want to wear. And this, yeah, you got to have hair and chest to pull that off. Oud wood. This one is a modern classic. It's wrapped about. People just absolutely love it. I think it's a solid entry as well. Darker, richer, but closer. It's going to hold closer to you. Uh, but if you want something fresh, if you want something cleaner, definitely look at, uh, you know, Bois de Jour. That one right there. Uh, did I say that correctly? I think I did. Yeah. Bois de, yeah. You guys know my French is horrible. Point being is this is a classic clean barbershop fragrance, but if you want something fresh, clean, smells like, you know, you're on the Mediterranean in a pine forest, then look at Costa, Costa Azure, however you pronounce that one. Another beautiful fragrance. I know they just came out with a parfum version. With Tom Ford, what I've noticed about all of his higher concentrations is they just last a little bit longer, but I think you can find a better deal on the EDP. Now, Framber Valdez, he actually talked about a number of fragrances. Apparently, during practice, he likes to wear something tropical, something that maybe even has a coconut note with it. I didn't, I, there's a number of fragrances. I could guess what it is. Uh, he also said when he goes out though, he likes to wear something a bit more intense. I'm assuming because he did talk about Sauvage, Dior Sauvage. This one right here, it's one of the most popular fragrances out there. That being said, it is still a solid fragrance. You're going to find various versions of this. I've got the EDT right here, which is a great place to start, but the EDP, the Parfum, both of those are good. But if you want something that's dark, rich, and just is going to blow your mind, check out the Elixir. Now, Manny Machado, again, he had a lot of fragrances as well. Talked about, you know, Blue de Chanel. He actually talked, he would change it every single year. Uh, Blue de Chanel was a few years back. He had Prada, didn't specify which one one, but uh, it sounds like Aqua de Parma Yuzu is his go-to fragrance. I saw this on a video recently and he just loves it. And that makes a lot of sense. Yuzu is one of those citrus notes. It's going to wake you up, make you feel more on point, but it also has great longevity. So uh, a solid fragrance. Actually, I've only gotten a sample of that one, but uh, I like that one as well. So good choice. And let's not forget Hector Rondon of the Chicago Cubs. What did he wear during that World Series run? Well, apparently it was Sexual Paris by Michel Germain. And apparently Pedro Strop that year went through an entire bottle very quickly of One Million by Paco Rabanne and then jumped over to Lome by Yves Saint Laurent. I have to say, overall, those were some pretty good picks and I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. What is your go-to fragrance? What's the one that you absolutely love and what video to watch next? Well, how about, boom, right here, how to apply a fragrance and make it last. So many times you buy a fragrance and it's gone within a matter of 30 minutes, a couple hours. In this video, I talk specifically, I break it out. It's the video's, the world's best video on how to make your fragrance last pretty much forever. It will, no, it's not going to last forever, but, but seriously, there's some great tips and tricks in here. Go check it out. Good video.